Hello and welcome to Visa Technologies KTAG video. Please ensure you have the KTAG connected to the PC before starting the program. As you can see, the program will automatically try and update the tool. This is now the main screen of K Suite. We'll start by clicking on the info button in the top left hand corner and seeing the information as followed. The info is quite important because it holds log files. Log files contain the information about what's happening when you're trying to communicate with ECUs. If you ever have any trouble reading or writing, this is how you do it. As you can see on the screen in front of you, I've just clicked log files and I've pulled the log file off the tool. Now the logs are actually saved on the tool, not the PC, unless obviously you pull them off as shown. Now, as you can see, um, I'm showing you on the screen now, you can see what device type I've got in. So obviously we have a master custom code group code and also the subscription expiry date. So that's all the stuff you find in info. If we go back to the main screen, click options. We have basic options set settings. So screen size settings, language settings and available vehicles. Available vehicles is important because we can see exactly what is supported by the tool and by what mode. Now, you can access the options and KTAG vehicle list without having the unit plugged in. So even if you don't have the unit with you, you can still see the vehicle list via the options button. Help. Help is extremely important. As you can see here, uh, I've clicked on check and we've got green ticks under English. Depending obviously on what your language, you'll have obviously green ticks under the different languages. Now, help is extremely important. If you're ever missing the instruction manuals for your various easy users that you're trying to connect to, it's because your help is out of date. To update them, simply go into help, press check, and make sure you have green ticks. If that is not to date, you'll see download links like you do under the other languages. It's very imperative you keep these up to date. Okay, so back to the main screen. So we've obviously got the different um, applications of K Suite support. So you've got car, the bike, the truck, the tractor, uh, or agricultural, and the boats. And in the top right hand corner, we have protocols. If you click on the protocols, we don't see actual vehicles, we see individual ECU types. On the left hand side, we can see the KES options. And below that, we can see the KTAG options. All the ones there, you see the basic different connection methods that you have. Now, for our ECU that we're going to do today, it's under a Siemens uh, Situate. So if we look at this list, uh, you'll see most of them under under Trico are Bosch. Um, and underneath that, obviously, we have the Situate, which is the one we're going to do today. This ECU is fitted with a Trico chip uh, which is what stops us doing it through the OBD port so I'm going to OK that and then we get our manual so if you didn't see this screen here the reason is because your manuals are out of date now to start with it will go on and explain how to basically well obviously when removing the ECU security things so if you go back to main screen the K suite and click back on the car button. This is another way of getting to exactly the same point we just got to. You've got KES and KTAG in the top left hand corner, so it's quite useful because you can obviously switch between um, various various applications. Obviously, as is a Land Rover, so we can just look for the Land Rover section until we find the one that we're after. So on this one, it's a Defender, and a 2.2 and we can see it there so it's a 2.2 that's your engine code is the type you got the kilowatts the horsepower of the vehicle the fuel type the my is year of manufacture so that's saying from 2012 onwards until there's a defender 2 for example um, it would be supported by having the Siemens SID 28 fitted and then at the end it basically says the mode family is the language and the tool uses to communicate with the ECU. So all these languages have a number and they've been assigned by Alien Tech to communicate. 
So the last two are CHK, which stands for checksum. If it's ticked, it means the tool will automatically correct the checksum. RD means you can read it. If we click on the info button here, this gives us an extra option on this ECU. So if we have a certain cable, um, cable 144300T108, we can actually, with the K tag, ID the ECU. Now, this will allow us to work out if we can K tag the ECU and basically pulls a little bit of information off it. It will obviously won't read the ECU. This is just to identify it very quickly using that method. So if we go back to that screen and click OK, we get back to the same manual we got to before. Now to start with, we have a big warning message in red. This basically says the KTAR can be a dangerous procedure and obviously you need to make sure you're obviously careful with what you do and actually follow the procedures um, very carefully. It also says there that you, they recommend that once you've removed the ECU and you've opened it, you've actually put it back in the vehicle to make sure the vehicle is still working correctly. This is actually a very important thing to do because it will ensure the vehicle the ECU is working after opening. Okay, so if we scroll down, uh, we can see the recommendations, remove the ECU from the vehicle, open the ECU, care not to uh, damage any parts inside, reconnect the ECU to the vehicle, and make sure everything's still starting, and nothing has been damaged during opening, obviously remove the ECU, and we get to this point here. As you can see, number six will say, always make a backup of the ECU before doing your own writing. It's obviously very important to do that. So instructions, connect to the ECU, and the pinout provider click here, connect instructions. Just the one option under this for this ECU, different ECU can have uh, more than one. We scroll down and we can see a picture of our ECU board. So at this point, you need to compare it to the ECU you have in front of you to make sure it matches. It's important to obviously ensure that the ECU is not different to the one you currently have because if it is it may be the wrong protocol that you've selected or it could be an updated ECU. Under this one we just have direct connection and it shows us a zoomed in picture of our connection screen and the connections we need to make to the plugs. It will say at the top left what cables you need. This is the cable that we'll need for this one. This is actually the tricore lead it's probably the, one of the most common cable you'll use when you use your K-Tag. As you can see there, the different colours and what they do. Different ones will obviously do different things, so we just need to ensure we use the correct cable on the correct pin when we come to connect the ECU. And as you can see at the bottom, incorrect or poorly made connections may damage the ECU, so it's important that you use the correct cables on the correct pins. We go back, click here again, just obviously it's defaulted to it being closed. What you will find here is the image may be upside down to obviously the, your connection methods and instruction methods. I normally start with actually making the front plug connections. Um, I find it easy to do this um, and I can move the board quite freely without knocking my, my connections on the top. But once you've done those, you need to make the connections on the top. Now, you will notice boot is in red. You will actually find this to be the grey cable on your tricore lead. And the reason it's joined together is because they need to be joined together. Once you've done your connections and you're happy with them, it's good to take a note of the plug-in number. As you saw in the blue right in there, it said plug in 510. And it's important because when you go to the next screen, you can select 510 from the list, which is a lot easier remembering everything. You can have more than one option in that list, so it's very important that you do that. So this is our main screen, and this is basically the reading and writing screen for the K-Tag. This is the difference between a master and a slave K-Tag you wouldn't see the micro external flash and the EEPROM options 
you simply see a backup and a read and a restore and a write. At the bottom here, we've got the patch, the serial programming activation and enable button. And to the right of that, instructions on how to actually make and activate the serial programming activation. One, make a backup. To do that, you simply press read. You hit enable once you've saved your backup and click enable. You wait for the changes to be done to the EVU. Once done, you will notice when you go back, you'll see the word containing patch. We're going to do this now for you. So we've got our connect ECU all connected up. We've clicked read and it's identifying the ECU. Now, depending on the ECU, it may take a couple of seconds or it may stretch into minutes for the KTI to identify the ECU. If it's your connections are correct, you should see a reading device info, as you can see in front of you, and it's the populated ID in the top right hand corner, and you'll see the sectors being read. Now, different ECUs will take different lengths of time to read. This one obviously is being sped up for demonstration purposes. Once it's been saved, we can just save the file on our computer. I recommend you save this in a folder, but for demonstration purposes, I've just saved it on our desktop. Now, for a master, we have this extra option. Do you want to save the file separately? If you click yes, it will separate the files into the micro and the EEPROM. As you can see on the KTAG screen, the external flash is not present on this ECU. We've got our KTAG, the full backup, the MPC file, and the EEPROM. If we hit enable now, we're going to select the backup, which is just on our desktop as KTAG read. So hit enable, we select our read file. Again, this has been sped up for demonstration purposes. So we've got the red and blue line. The blue line basically is the KTAG looking ahead. The red line is actually the writing. Uh, and now once it's done that, it's made changes to the ECU itself. And the blue line going across the screen now is the KTAG rereading the ECU. Because the change has been done to it, it now needs a new file to work from. So we should just let this be done. Again, it's just been sped up for demonstration purposes. At the end of it, it says for any changes to the ECU, you must use the files containing the word patch. And it says shows us where we saved that. So if we press OK and have a look at our desktop, we will see we have KTAG read patch. That's a full backup with the patch file. And at the bottom, we've got KTAG patch and our EEPROM one as well. We've got our full backup on lot and our full read. The one I've got highlighted in the bottom left hand corner just then is the one we will need to make a, the, the file from. The one I've got highlighted just now. Uh, I've made a file for this vehicle and obviously we're going to write the patch MPC back. Um, if you had a slave tool, you would simply just pre press right at this point and write back the file we give you. Being a master tool, what we actually do is just write back the little bit that we've changed, the micro. To do that, we're going to select under tip restore, click micro, click write, and then we can select our tune file which you can see there at the bottom is KTAG v perf patch. So press open. It will re-identify the ECU. Again, to make sure it still has communication with the ECU and nothing's been knocked or moved by what it's been waiting. Again, I've sped this up for demonstration purposes. Okay, so you can see that writing set is completed. That means we've now finished this ECU and this ECU is now being fully tuned. What you'd want to do is remove the connections. At this point, it is now safe to do that. Uh, put a bead of silicon around the ECU and obviously reseal the lid. You obviously want the silicon to ensure 
it, everything stays watertight. Uh, but that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching.